I am Sue Jones, uh, and this is about making cognitively accessible materials for math and open educational resources. I work in the Center for Academic Success at Parkland College, which is a community college in Champaign, Illinois. I give tutoring and academic support in pre-college level courses in a computer lab. So this is a pre-budget impasse, pre-COVID view of my domain, and this is me doing Zoom tutoring. Now, I still have some walk-in services, so hence the masks. Um, that first picture was when I wrapped up an OER train the trainer project, creating and curating OER. It was through the Links Online Adult Ed Community and the American Institutes for Research. And it was awesome and it got me into OER and I've been dabbling in other projects ever since. I was a classroom teacher for about 15 years, um, mostly in special ed and five years with the new community school. It's a college prep school for students with specific language learning disorders, learning disabilities. In the public schools, I'd seen students muddle through, survive, and at TNCS, these otherwise marginalized, no expectation students, they would slowly transform into independent learners. And it wasn't just a supportive setting. I learned completely new to me ways to build understanding. We didn't just slow things down and repeat Khan Academy style. Um, I saw that if we carefully constructed multi-sensory materials with reinforcement practice, explicit connections to language, students changed, they got smarter and they could learn math well and deeply. So fast forward, this is a typical article about how horrible things are um, with our current practices and policies for students like that. Um, if you land in remedial math, and an awful lot of students do, you usually end up with all of the debt and none of the credentials. And articles like this suggest solutions, different ways to assess different kinds of math courses. And they say they will work for as many as half of the students. And they don't even talk about teaching. Well, I'm here for the other half and for challenging the teaching. I think the OER community can create possibilities for adults to conquer math barriers at assorted levels. I don't mean get past some arbitrary assessment. I mean, understand the math that they thought they couldn't grasp. So right now we have, this is an example of Alex from Pearson and it's okay, this is visual, but this totally overwhelms a lot of my students. How can we get them to make meaning out of this? What's the path? There are good ones. You start with something simpler, something they do have and build them. The extra time for it is more than made up for because then they understand it and they don't have to redo it again later and they actually remember it after the test. So the bottom line is though, the commercial products treat math like a whole bunch of procedures. And the hidden assumption continues to be that math is a ritual to endure not something to actually learn. And I think OER can challenge this. So here's another example. Integers are like fractions. Students fall into traps when their old models fail. They'll remember, don't two negatives make a positive? With the right kind of instructional materials, we can rebuild the models from visual concrete. GeoGebra is open source and an awesome co uh, community. And Tim Rosinski created this. Now, if I were using it, I'd have spent time saying, addition in elementary school meant you had more, that plus sign, we need to get past that. Addition is putting things together. And this is visual kinesthetic. We can grab these arrows. If I align the beginning of the second term to the end of the first term, putting them together gets me too. And here's the OER magic. <laughs> I click in the corner, open in app. I have a copy of it. Pearson doesn't work like that. I can even click and see step by step exactly what the steps were taken. Now I need to find a tutorial or you know ask on Twitter, what does this mean? But I have open access to this. And there's more and more collaboration happening out there. It's really exciting. So I made my own and this is just for this. I want to get them to where they see when they see negative 10, they know it's under negative five. 
So an illustrative mathematics has an OER middle school program, also open source, and they've been working with GeoGebra. And I worked them for a short spell, writing supports for teachers, for students with disabilities. There's a ton of interest and need for that. So I'd like to put together separate activities for those students that need that resource room or whatever. There's so much potential. Now, one thing the commercial stuff gets is the progress and the gamification or grading somewhere in between. I think with JavaScript and HTML5 and CSS, we can compete with that too. It's not so sophisticated, but I played around. Um, we can make games that include the visuals. So this would be for learning your times tables. There's a lot of stuff online that gives you practice and it's all scrambled. Um, so we've already done 10 times one and got 10 points. I get to say what that picture is and what it equals and check it. And if I lose my lives, I get to start over just like Tetris. So I think we can make better stuff to learn <clears throat> before we practice. And then another thing we could do better than the commercial guys is space retrieval. So for this guy, he, he already missed one. And now we're going to back up and do an easier one with the ones rule. And then we're going to go back and see the same one you saw again. And it's, you know, again, with, with um, JavaScript, we can do that. So I just think there's a lot of potential for doing just as well as the commercial guys if we can get some collaboration going. Because obviously, a one person thing doesn't work too well. Um, I've seen one person projects, so I don't want to do that. And then finally, I've also been in book discussions and the butch launch for this little book on anti-racism and universal design for learning. I think we should get some real collaboration going with all kinds of community. So that is my lightning and I hope it precipitates something. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, so, Sue. Uh, we now are going to open the floor. If anybody has a question, you can type it in either the chat or you can unmute yourself and just ask Sue your question directly. And I am trying to find the chat. Uh, Sue, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, the little box with a... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're getting lots of compliments. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad I didn't see there were 68 people in the room. Um, that book is from Comcast, um, and it's awesome. Um, like, it's not just theory. She has all kinds of, like, real examples of ways to reconstruct and rebuild and turn the power over to students. I could go on and on on that. Um, And I, the Twitter is where I'm usually running into people. Like there was just a webinar three days ago with Tim Brzezinski showing how to do stuff, including all the like the weird stuff that that is so frustrating because, oh, you have to have this turned on to do that. You know, and, and it's 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 really like in the last six months. Well, with COVID, so many poor people are doing things online that I think, you know, I think things are going to do good, th going good directions.